Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Superman's Comics, and we are coming back like we do every week and giving you those three hot trends and three cold trends. That's right. This is the three up, three down. It's been a heck of a week, heck of a last week. We're going to get into that in a little bit, but we're going to start right now with the three up trends. And the first one we're talking about is that gunslinger spawn. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Bleedy Cool has a great article out right now talking about how the return of Gunslinger Spawn to the current Spawn series has caused a substantial increase in the number of monthly Spawn titles um, being ordered by retailers. So that's a real indicative of the popularity of this character. Now, it's not just happening in the current ongoing title, as we are also seeing Gunslinger Spawn back issues spike simultaneously certainly the two are related um but it really goes to show the viability of the character interesting to see kind of um what mcfarlane uh and companies sort of do with this information because they must be seeing the same data reading the same articles as we are and they must be aware of this trend it seems like the public wants more gunslinger spawn and it's a great thing too because there's always a few of those gunslinger covers that are always are in demand and see a rise in price. But we're also seeing some of those outliers now with anything tied to Gunslinger increase in price and increase in popularity, right? Yeah, absolutely. The next one we're talking about on the three up this week is switching over to Marvel, but we are talking about Lethal Protector. Yeah, now we've seen Lethal Protector, the miniseries spike several times, right? Mostly the lead up until the Venom movie, which was essentially a Lethal Protector movie. Um, We also saw certain issues like issue five and four start to get popularity as kind of Scream came into the current Venom publishing uh, cycle. Uh, And we're seeing again now uh, issues of Lethal Protector Spike. We're seeing issue two spike with potential rumors uh, to be involved in the whole like virus codex sort of thing. We're seeing issue uh, again four and five. Uh, this time, not Scream, it, it's Phage that this has all of the attention, um, mostly due to the, a brand new uh, Marvel Legends action figure um, as part of a, kind of the, uh, I think it's like the Maximum Carnage set that they, they've got going on right now. Now, you brought up the Marvel Legends action figures. I want to let people know, if you're a fan of those Marvel Legends action figures or even the Hasbro other lines of action figures, make sure you guys check out HasbroPulse.com and sign up for their newsletter because they're always putting out newsletters when they're dropping new action figures. Like you mentioned, that Carnage set, they even had freaking Gwynnum on there. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that just dropped today. Of course, you'll start seeing the advertisements for it, but if you want to be the first to know, make sure you sign up for that Hasbro Pulse newsletter. But the last one we're going to talk about in the three up this week, we've talked about late printings before and we've touched on with Marvel, but it seems like Marvel's also recognized that fact and it started to increase the number of late printings, right? That's right. Yeah, we, we've talked about the success of late printings, and certainly we could talk about that again this week. Uh, you know, the back issue market is rife with late printing. You know, you're seeing um, basically every late printing now that Marvel has done is starting to get its day in the sun. And I know that that sounds like a bit of hyperbole, and it is to a certain extent, but it's not by that much because we're no longer just seeing major keys uh, late printing start to spike. You're starting to see just limited covers and books you wouldn't expect things like iron heart number one the second print um and we're starting to see regular 30 40 dollars price prices paid for a lot of these late printings this is stuff that while the secondary market is certainly paying attention to and you know your speculation community is certainly heavily involved in uh at the same point the publishing side is paying attention to so you're certainly going to get um marvel's attention so marvel has brought back the one in 25 incentive for the venom 25 late printing don't love that trend but do love seeing more and more late printings we've seen this on a weekly basis when we're doing the last call show and we get to that part the end where we talk about the late printings a few weeks ago we were doing two three late printings and now it seems like we're at 12 to 15 a week as more and more companies are trying to get those late printings in as as the success of both the Marvel and I would say the Boom Studios late printings have uh, kind of been well documented. Uh, Others have tried to jump on board as well. Yeah, I'm always cautious of late printings. I I buy what I like, so I I buy the late printings that I like, but I think viewers should be cautious of 
they think every late printing out there is going to rise in value. I think you might learn a lesson at some point, but that's why we always say buy what you like, right? Right, absolutely. And you're much safer buying late printings of key issues. I mean, like if you, I think if you're buying four, uh, you know, four and five late printings, certainly I think there's a safety net there. It may take some time for them to become profitable, but there's a safety net there now. But if you're buying some random issue, just because, as you mentioned, it's low print, there's a scarcity involved, there also needs to be a demand there. So yeah, Marvel's definitely increased the number of late printings, but we're going to switch over to the downward trend. And we almost have some of the opposite with the DC titles, right? They're actually kind of cutting back on some of that. Yeah, that's right, Brian. The headline to this one reads that DC Comics has cut 20 to 25% of their publishing line, um, kind of across the board. And how that is perceived is kind of up to the market. Now, a lot of people are reading that, Brian, and they're seeing that as a kind of sign of the times. You get those doomsday conversations of, you get everything from, oh, comics is all gonna go digital eventually, to, you know, DC Comics is going under, they're going to end up selling the company type thing. Really, neither of which are true. Really, Brian, this is a positive thing, I think. Because here's what you have to understand. It's not that 25% of DC Comics across the board was cut. The bottom 25% was cut. So Jim Lee stated in the kind of like press conference uh, kind of publicity tour that he went on putting out this information, he said, that the, the series that were cut were all non-profitable for DC Comics. And if you're running a business, look, we all love, like, say, you know, uh, a Hellblazer comic or a Young Justice comic as much as the next guy. But if it's not making you any money, there's really nothing you can do about that. Um, and I think back to the start of the year, Brian, with Ross Ritchie, the CEO of Boom Studios, when he kind of put out that manifesto to the comics community, stating that reducing his total number of releases from boom studios had you know shown to be an increase in, in total sales numbers which would tend to kind of fly in the face of conventional comic publishing wisdom that typically doesn't think less is more they think more is more and uh you know ross had made the point that doing less focusing on what you are doing not simply putting product out in the marketplace not becoming overwhelmed, but instead really focusing on each release and putting sort of the level of care and effort, not just on the, the writing and production side, but also in the marketing side, um, that, that that would pay off for companies in the long run. So I just really think, in, whether inadvertent or not, this is just DC Comics taking that advice. They're, they're cutting the bottom 20 to 25% of the company, the, the non-profitable projects. They're going to go harder and longer on the projects that are profitable and are showing results, which are probably the ones that you love. So I don't know that this will affect you that much. And I also think that's also the perfect opportunity for fans of those books that are being cut to make your voices heard, post mm -hmm. on social media about it. Because we saw something similar with Marvel with stuff going digital only, cutting them out of print. And then all of a sudden they did a 180 on some of those titles, right? That's right. Spider Gwen and Star returned. Um, and I definitely think Marvel learned their lesson with the way in which that whole kind of process was received. But the next one we're talking about the three down, we talked about something, this topic somewhat similar on DC Comics not too long ago, but it was almost in reverse. And we're talking about last second variant changes with right now, especially that Star Wars number six we just talked about on last call, had a gorgeous one in 25 variant. But when I'm talking about DC, they had a variant that was a Peach Momoko variant that was open order, and they did a switcheroo as well and made that an incentive so what's going on with Star Wars number six now, Jack? Well, this, you got the exact opposite, Brian. You got a one in 25 incentive that was made open order. And really either way, we're down on this because yes, for, if you're purely like a speculator, you have no hand in this business, really. You're just buying secondary market and reselling. Um, then yeah, things like this may be good because there's certainly going to be chaos in the marketplace, right? Um, it, I, it's this is extremely difficult for dealers. Um, the more we get involved in this FOC process, the more I learn about um, what a, a dealer's you know day to day life is like. And, and you know this switch happened on FOC day, and if you weren't really prepared, um, you know some retailers we knew they already had their orders put together, had to go back and kind of edit and fix. 
And that's that's difficult. This is a big issue, right? You know, there's a lot of anticipation with the first appearance of this yellow lightsaber. Uh, certainly, it was something Marvel was aware of. I'm not really sure where the decision was made to make this JTC book, which are, are typically open order, but this one was one in 25, make it a open order. And then there was really no communication if there was a replacement incentive. Um, the, these last second changes, I mean, I don't know what making this change on the day of final order cutoff truly like helped Marvel. Um, I don't know what analytics they were looking at as far as the sales of Star Wars number six that made them think that they needed to do this. Um, so it, it's really indicative to me that sales were probably low and they wanted to somehow spike sales. So then that was the decision. But um, for, for an issue like this, it just seems like it's very similar to what we saw with the DC Comics book, albeit in reverse. Um, you know, just unnecessary changes, tinkering with something at the last second that is only going to cause dealer confusion um, and will probably only cause, honestly, a, a shortage of product, whether in the short term or long term. So we've come to the last one of the three down, and this is one that we wish we actually didn't need to talk about. This one's actually hitting us, especially personally, before this was actually the three up, three down. We also had this called the Hot and Cold Show, where we had a bunch of guests on offering what their hot picks were or what their cold picks were. And one of those guests on the show was a good friend, and Edwin, the comic jabroni. We had the sad, sad news this past weekend of the passing of a good friend, not only to us, but to the comic community. We have seen the outpouring of support as well as the deepest of sympathies from someone so close to the comic community, especially Simple Men's Comics family. I just want to take a moment to throw back when Edwin was on this show offering his hot pick, The Only Way Jabroni Could. Yo, what's up, CBSI Nation? It's Edwin, the comic jabroni, coming at you. My pick this week for the hot list has to be IDW's run of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. With last week's success of Ninja Turtles issue number 95 and all the spec value that can be had with that, I think going back into the run of you know issues 1 through 94, there are great key issues to be had that you can still find for cheap. Number... Issue number five, this right here, key issue, low distribution. In this issue, we get Master Splinter giving the Turtles their colored bandanas, guys. This is a great issue to have. There's a cover A and a cover B for this. Issue 24, City Fall, part three. Leonardo becomes a member of the Foot Clan, and he becomes the lead soldier for the Shredder. Definitely a story that needs to be read, guys. With Jenny becoming that first female ninja turtle you guys and everybody out there should be on the lookout for her first appearance that's going to be issue number 51 this is right after issue 50 where shredder gets beheaded by master splinter so it's a whole new world with master splinter leading the foot clan guys go find issue number 51 idw does a lot of four issue five issue mini series that are tied to the main line story and this is one of the bigger ones right here guys this is going to be the secret history of the foot clan issue number one in this story you're going to get the first appearance of kitsune and you also get the first appearance of takeshi tatsuo who was the original leader of the foot clan his soul embodies the shredder and kitsune is a witch who brings Shredder back to life. She's going to be a major player in all the issues leading up to issue number 100. On top of the main line story for Turtles, you also have another Turtle story that is called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universe. This is issue number one, guys. Very cheap, can still be had, but you get a first appearance of a mutant in here by the name of Zodi, which is a scorpion mutant, and she is like the hitman for this organized crime unit of mutants in New York City. So guys, I'm Edwin the Comic Jabroni. Go check me out on YouTube. Check me out on Instagram. My my pick for the hot list this week is IDW's run of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Go out there, go find them. Let me know if you found them, guys. So, till next time.
hearts go out to Edwin, especially his family. I know his family's having a tough time with this, but um, there's a GoFundMe. We'll put the GoFundMe link in the description of this video that helps out the family. But he will be certainly missed throughout the comic community, but he'll be definitely missed on Simple Men's Comics channel because we had more collaborations in the works. One was supposed to go, one was supposed to happen this exact week, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, this is, it, it's, it's truly devastating. Um, this is not just a loss. We talk about losses on, on this side of the list. Um, a lot of these losses are individual losses. A lot of these losses are financial losses, right? It's, it's, it's things we, you know, people thought were going to be hot and are not now down. Um, this is a very unique thing to be talking about because for me, this is a loss I have felt all weekend because this is a loss for the comic community. Um, Edwin had so much energy, so much passion, so much charisma, so much honest to God talent. And he wanted to be successful at what he was doing and he worked extremely hard at it. Um, he, his talent, his, his energy was infectious. Um, it was impossible to be flat when you were talking to him. He is somebody that we've kind of watched and been a fan of, and he's been part of the Simpleman's Comics family. And we wanted to bring him in more, right? And we wanted to work with him. So we came up with this idea to have these other channels that we felt like uh, were grinding. We really respected their hustle and we wanted to bring them in and collaborate with them and use our variant program for, to have certain YouTube channels talk about projects that they're passionate about. And if you know Edwin, the comic jabroni, like we knew Edwin, the comic jabroni, then you know that my man was the biggest Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan of all time. They just saw that hot and cold video. This is the guy that I went to. If I had a question for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I was reaching out to Edwin um, because he just, he, he knew it all. I and mean, you could kind of trust his voice on the subject. And we knew as far as announcing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles books, there was only one person to partner with. Plus, you knew that if he was going to be excited about a cover, that the Ninja Turtle fans and the Ninja Turtle faithful would be excited about a cover. And I, I really looked forward to all that we were going to do in working together and the end game goal of hoping to put out a comic jabroni Ninja Turtles variant was um, kind of something that we had just started to kick the tires on. And it's just, to me, a real tragedy. We won't get to see that to fruition. So yes, I know the whole community's hurting right now. I know the whole community found out over the weekend. I honestly, first thing I saw was a, a post from his wife on Facebook, and I thought it was just, we all know that Edwin was not, I don't want to say veteran, because he was actually still serving in the armed forces. I know he's away on active duty at the time. So I thought the post was just like the distance, missing the distance between the two. And then I saw more in it, and like my heart just sunk, because I had a tough week as it was already. Like the beginning of the week, I lost one of my best friends and I was dealing with that. And then as the week went on, I started feeling a little bit better. And then my heart just got another gut punch with this. So um, it's hard to talk about, um, but we definitely want to do them service. And like we said, other channels are doing these announcements for us. It was kind of like, hey, we like them. What would be a good project to have them do for us with the announcement? Edwin, you knew right away if we were doing a Ninja Turtle book, Edwin was the channel to do it just because he was so great about it and such a fan. And it's, it breaks our heart that he won't be able to announce this book for us, but we didn't want to give it to anyone else either, did we, Jack? No, no. Uh, we said before we started recording, for me, I, I will always think of Edwin when I think of this book. Um, and this was, you know, he was a part of the process for this book, right? The marketing that we were planning for this book. So I feel like uh, it, while it, it feels weird to you know talk about releasing a variant comic at, at right now and at, at any time right now um especially one that's tied to edwin i feel like the best way we contribute him um is to kind of finish the job and put the book out out there especially a book that i know he was so excited about man he was so his energy was infectious like i said and he was so excited about this so we want to bring to the comic community today our first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles variant, the first of many. Um, and we want to showcase it today in honor of Edwin, the comic jabroni. Um, this is our TMNT uh, number 110 exclusive variant from Simpleman's Comics and the 616 Comics. It will feature a trade dress as well as color virgin copy. We don't have the trade dress yet shown. Um, the trade dress will be limited to 1000 uh, it will be just nine ninety nine. The Virgin cover 
will be limited to 750 and it will be available for the low price of 1499 and that's not all because we have a limited to 500 red scale virgin copy that will only be available in bundles of three for $39.99. That's right, three copies of an absolutely limited comic for $39.99. Now, you, if this cover looks familiar to you, it is, of course, an homage to that great Raphael, number one, the first appearance of Casey Jones that you've seen tearing up all your favorite hot and top lists recently. Uh, we just replaced Casey Jones on the cover with Alopex, the newest member of the Splinter Clan with her awesome uh, green bandana. And uh, of course, the cover artist is none other than Hal Laren, who we are excited to work with. We have a number of projects coming out with Hal. And uh, he brings a real ultra realism to the turtles that we are excited to uh, kind of unveil to everyone down in the sewers in uh, Turtle Mania because we know that, you know, he, he's going to bring a different look to TMNT. So I, I'm excited for this book. I know it may not necessarily come off in my voice and demeanor, but, um, you know, I could never be as excited as about this one as Edwin was. And uh, um, it should not be me announcing this book at this moment. But in, in his honor, um, I want to make sure we put this one out there for everybody in the Simple Ones Comics family and especially Jabroni Nation. So, yeah, it definitely breaks my heart that we aren't able to have everyone do that announcement or the future books that we had planned with him. But I know he's here. And he was... And he was super excited about it. So, like Jack said, no one else could do it. And we even had our own, not, you know, reservations about doing it while talking about Edwin. But as excited as he was to do it, we figured this was the best time. So that that does go on sale. And um, our heart goes out to Edwin's family. But I do want to take this time. Like I said, last week was tough. I lost my best friend. My wife even lost a, a friend of hers from school. Um, and then Ed went on top of it. It was just a rough week all around. Um, gut punch after gut punch. Anyone that knows me on Facebook, I was at like almost my, my emotional low. But um, between everyone in the comic community, um, I want to give a shout out to Comic Core especially mainframe comic con uh, they were running my best friends go fund me link all, all weekend long on that mainframe comic con they were doing it for edwin as well so the the plus that comes out of it is when we talk about integrity and community that community is strong and there's a big family here in the comic whether it's youtube whether it's instagram all across you can go on instagram right now and look everyone in the comic community is posting pictures right now of edwin comic jabroni so um He's down there. He's up there watching over us right now, and uh, he'll definitely be missed. And it leaves a big void that's unfillable within the comic community. So um, we wish him and family all the best. And once again, I just want to thank everyone for the support. Even Tales from the Flip Side, they they gave a shout out last night for my buddy P James Pop. So we definitely appreciate it. And sorry to run on about this, guys. This is a longer episode. Um, Edwin will be missed, but. That's going to wrap up our three up, three down this weekend. And once again, the Edwin comic jabroni Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle How Laren variant goes on sale this Saturday at 2 p.m. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And with that being said, guys, this is Brian and Jack. We'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, Bill, I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that say stick up